This morning, Alan, good morning to you. How are you? Morning, lads. Good, thanks, Joe. Back from France? Back from France, yeah. We uh, we took the horse to France. Uh, it was great. It was a great trip, yeah. We went to Nantes, La Rochelle and Bordeaux. And uh, in, in between, we got to see... Uh, we got to see La Rochelle and, and Gloucester on Saturday night. So Rog wasn't too happy with me. He thought I was bringing him bad luck with the, the nearly lost that against Gloucester. Gloucester were brilliant. Um, La Rochelle not so good, I suppose, on, on the night. But uh, yeah, it was a great trip. Um, Ireland are going to be in Nantes uh, for the, the second pool game against against Tonga. And um, the first game is in Bordeaux against Romania. So, so come September, it should be fairly busy with Irish fans there. Nantes is a class city. Um, I, I don't know if ever, anybody's ever been there before, but the cycle lanes are actually in the middle of the road. <clears throat> they prioritise the cyclists, oh, as opposed yeah. to, and it's uh, and you're kind of a little bit scared on the bike, going, "I'm in the middle of the road here." But the cars are like, "Yeah, no, that's fine." We appreciate the fact that you're there. We just showed the footage of you um, wandering onto the pitch at La Rochelle. Is there just like a you know everybody recognises you? Off you go, or did you have to get special dispensation? No, we. Um we, we got some passes, Rog organised them. I was a bit sceptical about whether they'd actually be there in in the, uh, in the first place, but uh, he assured me on Friday that it was all sorted. So um, when I went to get the, the passes for the rest of the crew that were with us, there was just, there was just one there initially for me, and uh, then the girl said it was her mistake. They, they were, it was actually five there. So there was five of us on the trip. And um, yeah, I, I did, I, 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 we, we got looked after unbelievably well. The atmosphere there is just phenomenal. I couldn't believe the atmosphere. It was just there were constant singing, chanting. Um, and I decided, Rog said to me, come down and meet me before the game. And I kind of wandered down. And he was on the edge of the pitch and I, I ended up meeting him. He was quite relaxed. Um, so it was lovely. It was great to see that and see it from, from a French rugby point of view, the whole atmosphere and what... I suppose we've always talked about um, home advantage for French teams. And, you know, I played there many times against French teams and right across France. And you can see why, what the culture is like and, and what it means to people in these smaller cities, if you like. Um, the rugby at the weekend is everything. And the drum roll, the, the, the colour, all that kind of stuff was just phenomenal. So I was, I was blown away by the atmosphere there. But La Rochelle didn't play too well. Um, so he wasn't too happy. Donica Ryan was sitting beside him uh, during the game. There was a coach's area and he sat outside the box um, in a couple of seats right at the back. And um, yeah, it was a, nerv- a nervy game for them. They need to certainly need to be a lot better this week against Saracens. It was really nervy. It was one of those performances, though, that sometimes at the end of the tournament, you look back and you go, oh, that was the one where... You know, they, a, a team in a football tournament wins on a penalty shootout against a supposedly inferior side because they're like, were they a little bit complacent? Maybe is that is that in a way that they won't be against Saracens, for example? Possibly didn't protect the ball, a lot of loose passes, offloads, and I suppose to maybe there was a bit of complacency. The expectation was maybe I even had it that you know this would be um a strong win for for la rochelle to be fair to gloucester they were brilliant and they got opportunities in the game that kept them in it and they kept um probably getting boosters confidence boosters that we're here and uh you know we were playing well and we were still in this game and uh their work rate enthusiasm energy was was phenomenal so you know i've had those games we've all had them where you go to france or you go away in the champions cup and you're expected to win or even at home when you get probably an underwhelming performance and I think it's a good point you make that sometimes those are ones that kind of define um, your season and in a sense that you win win kind of ugly you don't want to be disrespectful to Gloucester because um, they were brilliant um, Lewis Reese Samus seeing him up close the pace uh, he caused them all sorts of problems but I think if, if La Rochelle look back in the game um they had lots of errors and, and loose passes and and moments in the game where they just didn't execute and poor kicking. A lot of stuff went on. And I, and I felt, God, this is going to be one of these games because, you know, in the back of everyone's minds, um, with the way the, the Champions Cup is kind of panned out and, you know, similar to, to, to Leinster, La Rochelle will be, you know, they had a path all the way to the final here. So you're thinking round 16, win that, 
you then have a home quarter, a home semi, and um, we were all thinking La Rochelle, Leinster again in Dublin, but um, La Rochelle need to be a lot better, I think. They wouldn't have frightened anyone at the weekend, but it was really important. They just got a win, to be fair. Roger's obviously a track suit manager as opposed to a suit and tie manager. Quinny, are you impressed up close and personal watching his demeanour, his um, prancing up and down the sideline? Is he, is he vocal or, or were you surprised by his style? Yeah, um, I was surprised he was so calm, to be honest. Um, I did look down at him a good bit as regards um, when when Gloucester scored or when something went wrong, there was no real animation or, you know, um, obviously he's had a few a few uh, issues on the sideline with different coaches over the years. But um, I watched every time one of the La Rochelle players came off the field in that second half and he was, he was kind of like a Jurgen Klopp type um hug and, and pat in the back and he was very calm um, I'm not saying I'm surprised at all at that because um, but it was just I felt the tension the crowd were in unbelievably tense Dunnick Ryan was kind of um, standing up and out of the seat a lot you know with, with some of the stuff that went the mistakes they made but um, no he's very impressed I, I tell you I couldn't believe well I could believe it when we when we left the ground um, the amount of people that are chasing him down for photos and and patting him on the back and following him everywhere. So it took us a long time to get out of the ground on Saturday night. But um, they love him there and they love, I suppose, Donnick Ryan as well. He's done a great job too. So um, they'll certainly need to be a lot better. But it was, it was definitely eye-opening, Shane, to see the atmosphere and what it means to people. And I kind of knew that from playing there, but just to see it as a... As a not working in any capacity, just being there as a spectator at the game, it was the atmosphere was incredible. Even when they were going poor, um, the crowd were going crazy, singing, chanting. Um, great atmosphere to play. Yeah, I, I can see why it might be a side of pilgrimage for a lot of uh, Irish rugby fans and just Irish sports fans generally over the next couple of years. We just need to put the um, final word on Munster. Obviously, you've done a deep dive with Neve on the Red 78 podcast this week, which everybody can get wherever they get their podcast. Just search Red 78. Um, now that the dust has settled a bit, what's the level of disappointment that you feel about how Munster limped out of Europe last weekend? I, I think it's not just just out of Europe last weekend. I think it's the last three weeks have kind of put a damper on things, if you like. With with um, it's I think it started with the Scarlets conceding forty two points in that game. Um, all good in the first half in that game in Cork in in, in March. Um, then obviously losing to Glasgow, and at the weekend then. It, it was always going to be difficult for, for, for Munster going there with the power that the Sharks have. But I think when you they've conceded 130 points and 18 tries in three games, so that's that doesn't kind of give give a good indication or picture of the way they've defended. I think there's been a run from November right up to that uh, Scarlet's game that was very positive. The way they were playing completely change 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 view in, in what they were doing last season or previous seasons around the attack. They're scoring a lot of tries themselves. I think they scored 16 tries in those three games. So if you were kind of looking at it, you think, well, defend better, stop conceding tries and, and keep doing what you're doing in attack and things will be fine. But I think the reality, Jerry, is, and, and everybody knows this, um, they're still short on a bit of power. And when you come to kind of the championship end, end of season stuff, you're going to come up against teams who have all their internationals back, um, a lot of quality, and it does make a difference. If you have, um, if you're playing a team that has seven or eight kind of regular seasoned internationals, current internationals, well, the quality kind of comes out. And if you look at that that Sharks team, and maybe again, their performance in 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 in, in against the Scarlets in Wales the week before kind of hoodwinked people a little bit and said, well, they're playing poor and how interested are they and how cohesive are they and all that stuff. But they're back at home in 28, 29 degrees heat and um, they flex their muscles. So it's dis very disappointing for Munster. It's not a surprise that they lost, I think, but some of the facets of the game are still disappointing and, um, you know, the, the breakdown was a big issue. And a lot of that came down to, I think it wasn't all just solely they were overpowered. I think they were off it. They had probably, if you marked their players out of 10, the Munster players, you had probably five, six out of 10 performances where you need eight, nine 
out of ten to go away from home and win those type of games. Uh, okay, let's let's preview Leinster Leicester. Um, how do Leicester go about stopping Leinster? Is there anything that they've seen from Ulster last weekend? Is there anything that they've seen recently, even at international level, when these players are playing for Ireland, it, that Leicester can cling to and try and use as a means of getting into the game and then keeping the game alive? You still there, Alan? No, he's gone. Mm-hmm. We'll get him back in a second. Um, obviously, that Leinster Leicester game. If you want tickets to uh, to the game, we have a pair to give away. Check out leinsterrugby.ie for tickets to purchase tickets. We've got a pair of tickets to give away to the best comment on the show this morning. I don't know how you're leaning so far. Mm, well, people being nice to me, that'll get you everywhere. Do you know? Absolutely everywhere when it comes to this. So I see a few people already trying that that ploy. And let me just tell you, you're onto the right road. So uh, yeah, certainly keep going that way. I know they're they're closing the top tier for the game, which is probably makes sense. It was a six day turnaround from the last game. It probably didn't have much notice for people. It's Easter weekend, but still it should be a decent atmosphere. You know? Yeah. Um Alan, you're back. I am sure sorry, earphones went on me there for some reason. I don't know why. No worries. I was just asking what the Leicester do to try and get into this game. Yeah, I don't know. Is there anything they can do as regards stopping Leinster? Well, it's very difficult to stop them. You've got to be on it for 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 the full eighty minutes um, as regards your kind of work rate, intensity, all that kind of stuff. The, the most obvious ones, and and lots of people will will kind of cling on to this one is slow Leinster down um, and physically um, get amongst them and and try and um, try and stop their flow because the tempo and the pace that they play with can just blow teams away. But we saw in the rain last week against against Ulster, uh, their kicking game was superb. And not just um, the number of kicks they had, but the type of kicks, you know, the contestables, the territorial advantage they had in that game. So they seem to be a team that's, and this isn't a surprise, that can play, play in conditions like that as well. They can play direct. They can have their expensive style to the game. Um, for, for, for Leicester, it's about physicality as well. You know, set piece. Maybe they might see some opportunity to go after to go after Leinster and that scrum, force a few penalties, but they have to be on it for 80 minutes and I just don't see it. I think um, James Cronin, Dan Cole and Montoya um, in the front row, that's an area maybe that they might see themselves having a little bit of an edge or an opportunity to go after Leinster but when you have the Irish front row essentially it's probably me being disrespectful and I'm not trying to be but um, that that's a good Leicester front row their back row you know with Jasper Visa Rafael and Liebenberg I think they've got to really step up and play constant for, for, for 80 minutes but it's just hard to see where they can stop Leinster because um they're just an unbelievably balanced quality side who look like um, they can just turn it on when they when they have to. Leicester appear to have this reputation almost, Quinny, as this purely kicking team, which is maybe unfair, but certainly under Wigglesworth, that's the the way in which they, they they've they've gone. Um, when you have someone like Pollard in your ranks, it it helps as well. But you'd imagine away from home as well that that will have some sort of an impact. We were just discussing there the fact that the top tier is going to be closed, but it'll still be a, a very much a home atmosphere for Leinster. Yeah, it will, and it's not unfair to say that um, they have this reputation of kicking because that's what they that's what they do. Uh, Van Poorfleet, the, the the number nine, kicks a lot for England. I think in their game against Edinburgh on Friday night, um, again, you know they play a couple of phases and it slows down and it's box kick. Um, you know, Leinster kicked a fair bit on on Saturday, but it's the it's the it's the contestable kicks, winning it back and and gaining territory from that that are really important. If Leicester do that well, and if you kick well in in, in a game, and sometimes you criticise um, teams kicking too much in games, but if you kick well, the stats show that you win games. So I think um, Richard Wigglesworth will still want Van Portfleet to kick a fair bit. But um, you know, if I was playing Leinster, you, if if I was preparing for this game and playing Leinster, I think. And you were trying to do something different. It would be try, try, and, try and attack, try and play with a bit of abandonment, if you like, uh, on occasions. Um, 
it'll be a similar approach approach to what we saw from England. There's going to be aggression, intensity, pressure, line speed in defence. Um, will it be enough? I don't know. They've got to get a start early in the game, but um, I can't help but going back to that quarterfinal last year um, over in Leicester when Leinster just started the game so well. They blew Leicester away. I know Leicester came back a, a bit in that second half, but there's there's a gulf uh, on paper here in the quality. And for Leicester, like I say, it's kind of stating the obvious. They've got to play for 80 minutes and really have a game, have bring a game plan and and an intensity that that shocks Leinster, which I don't see happening. Um, Scott Penny straight in at seven if Van der Fleer is out, which we expect. I would imagine it depends what way um, Will Connors has been in training and stuff like that because um, obviously Will Connors was a couple of years ago was after jumping ahead of of Josh van der Fleer even um, and he's a quality player. It just depends what kind of training he's been doing and how he's been impressing the, the, the Leinster coaches but I would think that um, you know Scott Penny, what a player to have to come into the side. Um, he's a brilliant player, so much power um, every time he scores, he, he comes and plays. He scores tries. Uh, very physical player. Very lucky to have that co- kind of quality backup, aren't they? Someone like Scott Penny. For me, you would think, um, you know, he signed a new contract recently for another couple of years. Um, he's happy and comfortable to stay, and I think he's only started five games this year. So um, it's. It's obviously down to the, the culture and the, the team that he's playing with and the club that he's with, which is top quality and one of the best and probably not the be- not, if not the best in Europe. But what a player to, to have the ability to come in. I think it looks like it will be Scott Penny unless you know something different is happening behind the scenes with Will Connors and he, they, they fancy him for, for Friday night. I think in a lot of people's minds, Quinny, we're hurtling towards uh, a Leinster-La Rochelle final. I know that's the hope of Leinster fans, maybe, to get that uh, element of revenge from last year. Uh, having watched Leinster recently and having seen La Rochelle in, in person last weekend, are you leaning towards that being the, the likely outcome? You have to be careful for what you wish for sometimes, Shane, because uh, you know if you looked at La Rochelle last weekend as a Leinster fan, you would say, God, yeah, we can, we, we, we're we way better than this and and... You know our quality and our 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 team, and maybe we want revenge. But you know, it's uh, it depends. I think on what we saw last Saturday, La Rochelle need to be a lot better. Um, I think they they were the week before away to Bordeaux were very good, and maybe they got a little bit complacent, and maybe it's a mentality thing. We'll see and and know this weekend because Saracens will fancy fancy crack us. At La Rochelle in in their ground on on, on at the weekend on Sunday. So, um, with the home advantage, you think if Sarah, if La Rochelle get through on Sunday, um, then they're home in the semi finals. They play Stormers or Exeter in the other side. Um, yeah, you would think so. It'd be a perfect kind of a perfect final, wouldn't it? It would create some incredible colour. I think La Rochelle fans would travel in their droves as well to Dublin, but. It's it's just so hard. Um, the only ones that can trip Leinster up at this stage, I would think, is themselves. And again, I don't see that happening. I think they're pretty grounded, um, full of confidence, full of belief. And, you know, you've Gary Ringrose back this weekend, Caelan Doris. They're not bad players to come back into a side, are they? No. Um, so, yeah, it's... it's one, one last one for you, Quinny. One last one yeah. for you. Um, James Lowe's in the papers today talking about his diet on match day. Uh, pancake and smoothie for breakfast, steak sandwich or pasta for lunch, and then snacking the rest of the day to give himself the uh, the energy. What was your match day back in the day? Um, it depends what time it was. If they were the early kickoffs, the one o'clock ones, I hated those ones, or the half twelve ones in France. Sometimes um, you're kind of scrambling to to kind of even drag yourself out of the bed and have any sort of appetite. A bit of cereal, and then you're back for pre-match meal at half nine quarter to ten you're trying to eat chicken and pasta at that hour of the day so those ones are tricky the evening games are much easier because you get up have breakfast have a little bit of lunch and then that pre-match meal would have been a half three four o'clock uh, with pasta and chicken so I would have been I would have always tried to traditionally eat a bit of you know pasta and car- load up on the carbs really um, I like the idea of the steak sandwich but I'm not sure if if I would have had it on the day, but you can't beat a good old steak sandwich, can you? But 
Um, Maybe the steak anyway, with no all, bread. Yeah, it's all it's all about carbs, really, and the type of energy. From what I can remember of when I played, um, load up on the carbs. Uh, Leicester will need plenty of carbs for Friday night, but who who knows? They 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 might have a go. I tell you, I heard Visa, you know, the South African number eight. He's he's just a handful, and if they can get their forwards kind of rumbling a little bit, maybe that's where they they, they possibly will fancy causing Leinster some problems up front, scrum line out malls uh, and in those contact areas but it's hard to see beyond Leinster isn't it alright Quinny we'll leave it there good stuff thanks a million cheers lads